this week, 525,600 minutes. How to recognize a new season of life is starting in your RV. Plus, National Geographic is out to shock you and a road trip tour that already has Jason making plans. This is the RV Miles podcast. RV Miles is sponsored by L.L. Bean dedicated to helping you experience all the benefits of time outside and stay more comfortable while you're out there. From soft and breathable activewear designed to do it all, to just right layers perfect for changing weather, to sun smart clothing that blocks the sun's harmful rays, every L.L. Bean product is made with comfortable time outside in mind. Visit LLBean.com to shop now. L.L. Bean, be an outsider. Welcome to episode 207 of the RV Miles podcast. I'm Jason. And I'm Abby. And we are two full-time travelers who, along with our three boys, have been crisscrossing North America since 2016 on one epic road trip. Here at RV Miles, we talk about everything from lifestyle and destinations to industry news, our national parks, and so much more. Uh, we are We are wrapping up the days before we finally actually truly are picking up our fifth wheel. I am told it is actually done. They're just buttoning up, buttoning up some stuff on it, but it is done and ready for us to pick up towards the end of next week. We are running out of places to record this <laughs> podcast. We have really done a tour of the Quad Cities. It's time to get back on the road and get back on the road in our yeah. new home. And we are making a ton of steps towards that, some of which we're going to talk about in Fresh Tank, Black Tank. But yeah, I'm really excited. I'm, I'm getting giddy. Like now it feels real. And I'm starting to think about it in terms of living in it, whereas before it was just sort of this idea. Yeah. Now I'm really thinking, I'm making an Ikea list. Yeah. Like, what do I need at Ikea? And I'm also stalking the Sabre 37 FLL Facebook group. That's a good tip. There is a, there's a Facebook group for our specific yes. floor plan of it's our a- RV. And if you... you Go look on Facebook and, and see there might be one for yours as well. And if not for your floor plan of your model, there's usually a Facebook group. So you can ask those really super detailed questions that you can't ask in the big Facebook groups yeah. where people don't really know anything about your model at all. Even even like, like the Grand Design Owners Forum, that's a big forum of a lot of people where if you go to one that's like specifically for momentum owners, like you could ask specific questions about your RV. And I think that's a really great thing about Facebook groups. Yeah. And if you don't have one for your floor plan, you could start one. Yeah. You know, this group only has about 350, 400 members. Yeah. But I've learned so much already on just like storage tips. Yeah. I'm So I'm really excited now. I wanted to kick off the show today. I'm going to slide the laptop over here oh, away, away from you because I need to see this. But I'm going to, I wanted to start the show off with this uh, interesting list from National Geographic that I found. Uh, it, they, the, the title's a little over the top. It's these <laughs> National Park Facts will shock you. Um, <laughs> At least they didn't put it in all caps. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, it's not in all caps. It's, it's true. not in I all caps. I think that's just their style. <laughs> Did you but see who it's by? It, it is. It is by our friend John Waterman, uh, who was on our America's National Parks podcast. And a lot of these facts are in his fantastic book, The Atlas of the National Parks from National Geographic, which is like a giant coffee table book that is not, when I say atlas, it's not maps. There is some of that as well, but it's like uh, the structure of a sequoia tree. Mm. It's like the the layers of rock at Zion. It's like these really detailed sort of uh, drawings and diagrams of that kind of stuff. I think it's an amazing, amazing book. I can't wait to bring it back home. Yeah, put it in the yeah, yeah. we haven't we haven't been hauling it because it's heavy. No, well, we haven't had anywhere <laughs> for it, and now we will have somewhere to put it and keep it safe. But here are some interesting facts: uh, the only national park, at least U.S. national park, south of the equator, is American Samoa, 
which we actually just talked about on a recent episode of the America's National Parks you read podcast my mind. as well. The smallest national park by area. Now, this is not of all of the National Park Service units, uh, but of the of the capital N, capital P National Park. Can you guess which one is the smallest? The smallest of all of them, right? Yeah, of it's, the 63. Um, Oh, of the 63. Yeah, yeah. Um, would that be, um, I kind of want to say petrified forest? I, I would, I, that would be a good guess. That's fairly small, uh, at least the area you go to a petrified, but no, mm-hmm. it's Gateway Arch. Oh, of course it is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. I forgot all about that. Which Sorry, that, St. Louis. The renovation they have done there is just spectacular. And I know a lot of people aren't crazy about it being a national park, but it's still an awesome place. And the stuff that they have done to make that a real true gathering space for the you know front lawn of St. Louis, it's, it's really cool. Our oldest national park is, of course, Yellowstone. Uh, but did you know before Yellowstone, our oldest really sort of national parky type area it was hot springs yes i did know that as a matter of fact a lot of people a lot of people around hot springs get a little angry at that designations <laughs> from 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 yellowstone the world's longest known cave system is of course at mammoth cave national park in kentucky and they have still not mapped it all they mm-hmm. keep finding more and more and more uh, because it takes, there's so many hundreds of miles of cave underground and you can only be underground for so long if you're a cave <laughs> explorer, right? You're human. Uh, the um, a largest barrier reef in the U.S. is at Dry Tortugas National Park. The greatest density of natural arches in the world is, of course, at Arches National Park. There are hardly any elsewhere. They're all in this weird little spot in Utah, which is amazing. And one of these days, we're going to go there. (laughs) The world's largest living tree by volume is in Sequoia National Park, where it's 97% wilderness and home to over 2,000 giant sequoia trees, with General Sherman being the world's largest tree. The Grand Canyon is, of course, the largest canyon in the world, but did you know that it is large enough to fit 19 statues of liberty, that it's deep enough to fit 19 statues of liberty on top of each other? Wow. Isn't that incredible? Wow. Uh, okay. that, you know, I'm always floored when we're at, like, when we're at Zion, and we, uh, when we look at the big rock formations in that Zion Canyon, and, and then we compare them to like the height of something like the Sears Tower, and yes, I'm going to call it the Sears Tower. I don't care what Forever. they call it. I don't even know what they call it now. Do they still call it Willis? I think it's no, changed. No, I think it's changed. I think uh, it's been sold again. But when you look at those walls and you're in that canyon and then you realize that they are not just somewhat taller, they are much, much taller, like almost twice the height of the Sears Tower. Yeah, it's amazing. It's really incredible. The world's largest gypsum dune field is in New Mexico at White Sands. And the highest point in North America is in Denali National Park, of course, on top of Denali itself. And Denali National Park is larger than the state of New Jersey. White Sands was going to be my second answer if Petrified Forest had not been the correct one. So there are more facts in here, and we'll share this article in the show notes. But you should check out that book if you're, especially if we get asked a lot uh, about gifts when people are looking for a gift for somebody that is a national park lover. This is something they will actually love. Uh, It is not just, you know, a lot of national park books are just photos, which is great and all. But I I think this is just so much more than that. And I really love John Waterman's book. Well, if I can say, too, I really just love John Waterman's writing as well. I mean, this is a person who truly loves the parks and they have spent a ton of time in there and it shows in their writing they're so passionate about the parks yeah uh the other thing i wanted to bring up was this cool article that i found from dwell.com d-w-e-l-l i love this website you know we often talk about road trips um and think of them as like these long grand journeys across route 66 and stuff and you know when you really think about doing that for most people it doesn't make sense like you don't have the time to take to travel the whole length of route 66 and then back but what does make sense is a lot of these smaller circular routes, road trips, like you're doing the um, the con- Great Lakes tour, yeah, or, something or the like Kentucky that. Bourbon Trail, yes. that kind of kind of stuff. So this is a, a a road trip through Wisconsin that follows the Frank Lloyd Wright Trail, and you get to go to several Frank Lloyd Wright homes and buildings in the state of Wisconsin, which I. I 
can't remember if that's where he was born or where he lived, uh, but but Frank Lloyd Wright had some sort of uh, local roots in in Wisconsin. And it begins at the at the S. C. Johnson Wax Administration Building, where you can get a free tour, and uh, and just goes on from there. So uh, I, I think it's really interesting. The the photos are, of some of these are amazing, and I would really love to do a tour like this to visit some of them. All right, as soon as I saw you drop this in, I was like, <laughs> oh well, it looks like we just got our next adventure. <laughs> We're gonna do that someday. <laughs> So we'll share both of those articles in the show notes. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the different stages of life on the road and recognizing when they're happening, when things are changing uh, for full-time RVers or for people that travel a lot or um, or just, you know, life in general. Yeah, because we're in one of those seasons <laughs> right now. We'll be back in a minute. Find your next camping adventure with the Spot Tonight app. Spot Tonight offers real-time visibility across numerous campgrounds available for immediate booking. Easy to use and free to download. With Spot Tonight, you can build a travel profile, share parks with friends via messaging, and mark your favorite campgrounds. Travelers can search for specific parks that meet their exact needs for tonight and beyond. No more blind searches in hopes of finding an available spot. Simply look, book, and go. Campground owners, download the Spot Tonight app and see how your park can join a vastly expanding network. For more information, visit spottonight.com, that's spot, the number two, n-i-t-e.com, or simply download the app in the Apple or Google Play stores. Look, book, and go with Spot Tonight. Electrical surge protection is one of the cheapest insurance policies you can provide for your RV, and the Power Watchdog Smart Surge Protector, made by Hughes Autoformers, beats the competition with field replaceable surge modules. With other brands, when the surge protector takes a large surge or a spike, you have to throw it away. The Power Watchdog can be brought back to life with one small affordable part you can replace yourself. They'll even give you a free surge module in the first two years. And now they have a limited lifetime warranty. Use the coupon code RVMILES, all one word, for 10% off your order at HughesAutoformers.com. That's code RVMILES for 10% off at HughesAutoformers.com. All right, so if it isn't incredibly obvious, I'll go ahead and spell it out. This was my idea. This was my <laughs> topic to discuss. I came to Jason earlier this week and I said, you know, one thing we've not talked about or we haven't touched on in a really long time is navigating different seasons. And we are rolling into our fifth anniversary as full-time RVers and where we were as RVers when this all started back in 2016 and where we are now is very, very different. And I feel like we have navigated a lot of different seasons season sometimes and you're not talking winter spring summer or fall no i'm not i'm i'm talking more on the emotional level on, on the spiritual level um and i think that you know right now as our oldest is definitely moving into the teenage years and we are getting ready to move into you know probably the biggest home we've had so far on the road yeah. and uh, coming out of an incredibly uh, interesting difficult and joyous last year and a half. Um, I think it's just kind of time to talk about this a little bit. So that's where we're at. We're going to go ahead and we're just going to dive right into this and we're going to free flow this conversation and kind of see where it goes. But one of the things I really wanted to talk about was just knowing when things are changing. What are some of the signs? And we're going to just talk from our own personal perspective, but what are some of the signs that maybe you are entering a new season of life as an RVer? And I think for us, one of the things that I notice immediately is when there starts to be a lot of discord in the house. Now, this can probably apply for outside of RVing as well, but when there begins to become a lot of arguing and a lot of just a, it becomes a lot of work mm -hmm. for us to do what we're doing, that generally tells yeah. me that there's a shift that's happening and either we're not listening to it or the kids are not listening to it or none of us are listening to it. And I have really felt that especially as we have come out of 2020 and how 2020 really impacted us as campers with COVID. And I've noticed that as we roll in. And so that has kind of prompted me to stop and ask myself a little bit, like, wh what is not working? Well, I think there's also, there are lots of moments when you see that it just feels like you're going through the motions and you're doing the things that sound fun, but 
nobody's enjoying it or not everybody's enjoying yeah. it or um the, the, and, and that could be that doesn't have to be full timers that could be you know you you travel in a in a way that you always travel you always go to the same campground on the weekends and it's just the thing you've always done and maybe the last few times just hasn't felt the same and i think a lot of us are going through that because of covid i think that's forced that on a lot of people just naturally, even if they weren't going through a, a, a life change. Yeah. And one of the things I have been thinking a lot about is when we first got on the road, uh, our main goal was, and we were so hot for getting to as many National Park Service sites as we could. Every bit of planning we did was really centered around that. And over the years, there's been this bit of a shift, which has been really hard for me to kind of accept. And some of that has been led by our kids. They're not as excited as they were when they were little to do the Junior Ranger program, especially our 14-year-old. Like, he's over it. Yeah, that's it. Okay? And it's too young for him. I mean, that's the... Yeah thing it is you know and so then it becomes how do we navigate doing that with the little one but now we have the big one who's not interested what's he going to do while we're there and then also I think because of the excitement by everyone in this country to visit parks maybe I have become a little hesitant to want to go because they are so crowded. And what used to be us getting out on a trail and having this really quiet family time, sometimes the only time as a family that we could disconnect and get away from work and get our kids focused in yeah. on us, it gets harder now because there's there's a lot more to navigate out there. But, you know, we, we had some wonderful experiences in national parks over last fall and over this spring as well. We did. And I... I but they w- they were met with some yeah. resistance. Like, oh, you yeah. know, sometimes I, I, mean, I felt like you and I were the first to order yeah. and our children were the resistance. Yeah. And they yeah. just were like, no, listen to me. And, and that's stuff that I, we know that, you know, all parents are going through stuff where it's like wanting the devices, wanting to be on, uh, wanting to be playing video games instead of doing anything with a, a family. And, and you know, Talking that's to their friends, all like stuff, that's become really important yeah, for Jack. Yeah, it, it's like, all stuff we grew up doing uh, as, yeah. as well. But that is a it's it's a change, and and there are um, I think what we have come to learn that I'm sure lots of people have learned well before us is that you can't just fight that change entirely. You can yeah. you can try to find ways to keep some of the stuff that you want to keep find what's important to you and and keep that in your life uh, but you have to make space for that change to happen and to allow it to happen instead of trying to completely force it away yeah and i i have to say too you know because i i feel like right now we're in what i would call phase three perhaps phase four of our full-time RV journey. Like I really feel like phase one was when we first got on the road, right? And everything was very new and we were learning and we were navigating it. And there was this sense of uh, just almost overwhelmed, but in a very good way. Then I feel like phase two really started when we got Ranger Gandalf Traley the second. Okay, so now we've entered into a different phase because now we really know what we need and what we want to make this a little bit more successful. Immediately, I think we went into phase three, which was a lot of really intense navigating um, life with uh, your medical issues that came up almost immediately, getting all of that settled, and then moving right into COVID and having to navigate that as full-time RVers, having to navigate medical care when you're, you know, a thousand miles away from the nearest family member and then having to navigate sheltering in place and how all that worked. And so that felt like phase three. Now I feel like we're moving out of that and we're moving into phase four, which feels very different to me. We're moving into a bigger home. Our kids are older now. You know, our youngest is eight, which blows my mind. You know, we went to, I said that when we were in Chicago, we went to the Museum of Science and Industry and I said this to you and it was so funny because it was like water down your back. You didn't even, didn't even phase you. But I said to you, this is the first time I've ever been to this museum without a stroller. Yeah. And that was really shocking to me. 
and you were like, oh, okay. Blah, blah. Yeah, well, you could have and, done that four years ago. Right, I mean, like, but I'm just, you know, it, but that particular museum where I, yeah. as especially when I was a stay-at-home mom and you were working 60, 70 hours a week, I was there all the time with those boys running around with the homeschool kids with a stroller. And <laughs> I immediately went online to, I have a very small mom's group on Facebook that I'm a part of. I immediately went on there and I said, you all are going to get this. Jason literally just blew this off. I'm at MSI and I'm here without a stroller for the first time. 30 moms are like, oh my gosh, I totally get that. Isn't that the craziest feeling? Where are you putting all well, the snacks? You know? <laughs> <laughs> but it, that's what no, this. We spent a ridiculous amount of money on buying snacks there. <laughs> we, that's we why. Six dollars slice of pizza. We were being pizza. tourists. They were, I mean, literally, we spent $27 yeah. for each of us to have one slice of small slice of pizza i didn't even get one but that's you know i think that's an example is recognizing and one of the things i think that you know can be a struggle to especially if you're a family traveling or this could just be with between you and your partner you know where do you find that balance between i only want to stay at state parks or i only want to do dispersed camping well i want to stay in the private campground and i want to have all the amenities or you know the kids want all the the bouncing and the pool and the mini golf where is that balance and how do you do that in a way that you know keeps everyone happy and and respects it'll be interesting to see how this works for us when we get back on the road yeah but i think one of the biggest lessons for me in the last almost five years now has been that that it is okay to have a plan and it is okay to ignore that plan and to change that plan yeah. and forget that plan we're notorious for throwing plans and, out the window and, and that's and, and like we felt guilty a lot about mm-hmm. that and i there's no reason we should and i i think it's it's that it's also though okay to like i guess for instance a lot of people plan to get on the road like we did with the national parks and stuff where they they want to visit all 50 states or all 48 states within a certain amount of time or they want to check off whatever they want to check off they want to do that route 66 road trip what whatever it might be and i think a we learned really quickly that we need to slow down but b like we well i guess we know a lot of full-time families um who uh, who their main goal was all of our goal was tourism like we want to mm-hmm. see all these places but a lot of them these days they just follow each other around for company <laughs> um yeah. and they still enjoy like visiting places and stuff but the prime the prime thing that leads them is often they're in a group of two or three families and that's what they do mm-hmm. and that's their life and i think that's awesome that's not us Maybe it will be us someday, but if I have my way, it will but, be but here some, very soon. <laughs> some people feel guilty ab- ab- about that, or like, or coming off the road. I mean, yeah. be, being being a full timer and then deciding, not even deciding it's not for you, but deciding, okay, now it's time to do something different. I think people that end up full time RVing are people who like new things in general, right? So when when we hear of like people coming off the road, I think some people feel like a failure, like that they couldn't make it because they didn't full time. Like, no, have- do it for do it for a year, do it for a month. Who cares? I it, mean, it's something you did, and then do something else. That's fine. You will never need to justify your choice for yeah. getting on the road or getting off the road here. Like we will never judge you for that. And I think it's very clear that as we talk about this, we're also not here to offer you, you know, advice on this and tell you how to do these different seasons because we're living them as they happen. And honestly, this is kind of the first time you and I have ever had this conversation sort of in this space like this. Like we're having this right now on the podcast. We talk about this stuff a lot about with our business and we're bad at, yes. we're really bad at this with our business as well because yes. we're bad at recognizing when something is changing and we need, we were, you know, a few months or year late from when we should have made that change and maybe a change is forced upon us or whatever, but yeah. maybe it's a good change and we should have done it before. And I think that's a lot of what we're going to be talking about when we, uh, when we're at the RV Entrepreneurs Summit in, yeah. in September, but, but we don't, we, we should be looking at our life in that way as well. Because I could absolutely talk in at length about our business or a business in general. And I recognize right now we are very seriously moving into another phase with RV Miles. And one that I particularly am having a 
a, a hard time sort of navigating myself because our travels at this point could just be based on work. And that's, you know, I'm really struggling with like how much of our travels is a, we're going here to do this thing for work, but then we need to go here and do this thing for us. And that's really, really tough. I could book out the rest of 2021, probably into 2023. And we would only go places that have to do with work. That is a blessing But it's also, it's very intense and it's intense for our family. It's an intense thing to ask of our kids. So there you have it again, the balance, especially for those who work on the road, the balance between work and the balance between personal life and recognizing when those seasons are shifting. People often are asking us, well, how how do you do so much? I don't, you know, I don't get it. You guys do put so much out. you do. And the answer is we we. We're, we don't do we it don't, well. We're not successful at it. We we fall down all the time. We never we don't get stuff out on time. And I know, sometimes <laughs> wonder if people think I sound like a broken record because I'm always saying my apologies for the delay in getting back to you. My yeah. apologies that I dropped the ball on this. You know, at, at some point you start to sound like a broken record. And, and that works with business as, as in life as well. You have to you have to recognize the things that are are bringing you fulfillment and joy and income or uh, free time and recognize the things that are not and and figure out how to cut things out of your life yeah you know? and you know listen I will continue to fall down every single day for RV miles for our business for my kids for our family for our life because I I love it. I love that we get to do this. And I love that I can sit here and say, I'm, we're only human and we falter a lot, but we always pick each other back up and we always keep going on because we have begun to find an incredible community out there in the RV world of people who are doing the same every single day. And I think that that's really cool and that we can all sort of draw a little bit of inspiration from each other, but also learn from each other. Thank goodness there were people who have come before me raising teenagers on the road or just raising teenagers. Like I just thank goodness others yeah. did it. I don't know how my mom and dad did it, yeah. but they, they somehow got me through into adulthood. Thank you, Dave and Sue. The other, the other big season of life that we're, we're noticing right now is this, this move Hopefully, you know, in the not too distant future out of COVID. Um, but, you know, the kids are playing at parks again and, and, and able to talk to other kids again and stuff like that. And, you know, our kids were, that was one of the things we were really proud of. Like when people talked about, like, to us about living full time on the road, they were often asking us about the kids. Well, how are they, you know, they're not playing with other kids and how are they meeting people and stuff like that. And, one of the greatest things about full timing up until COVID was that the, our kids were so good at meeting other kids and playing with them and instantly making a connection when all the weekenders would come into the campground or when there was another full time family showing up. We, you know, decide to go out on a trail and they instantly make bonds that have lasted for for years now, which is awesome. But there, there are having to you know wear masks and and distance and not use playgrounds and all this sort of stuff that they had to do during covid is has made them very apprehensive now and i'm sure they'll pick it back up at some point but i think that's a season of life that like the whole world is going through right now yeah yeah we're all trying we've all been introverts for so long that nobody knows how to be an extrovert (laughs) yeah like we're navigating like just just social norms are new and it's it's a very interesting yeah. time. So this is, you know, I have no idea if this discussion was helpful, but I just really enjoy having conversations like this every once in a while with our community because they tend to offer such lovely wisdom in the comments. Hey, and so. If the number of sweatpants we saw today at the Mississippi <laughs> Valley Fair is any indication like the world has gotten a little bit more relaxed and maybe that's a good thing. There there was a <laughs> lot there was a lot of athletic wear at that state fair today. Um, but hey, while at the state fair, 
we set a new record for the family game show. Yeah, so, you, you know, got. <laughs> I got Velcro balls. Abby was wearing at a me. Velcro suit, and there were about <laughs> twenty kids throwing Velcro balls at her, mm-hmm. and she set the fair record of of getting 54? hit by fifty four. Fifty four. Fifty four. Only got Velcro hit in the face balls. twice. <laughs> By very tiny little people, too, with a mean curveball. Wow. All right. (laughs) right. We're going to be back in a minute with our Fresh Tank Black Tank segment. We'll be right back. (laughs) RV season is here, but the change of seasons also brings rain, mud, pollen, and other elements that you have to waste your time cleaning, or worse, that can end up damaging your vehicle. Whether you own a motorhome, a travel trailer, or a truck camper, EmpireCovers.com is here to help you protect all your vehicles against Mother Nature. EmpireCovers.com offers high-quality, affordable covers that are engineered to protect. Every cover comes with a free warranty to guarantee that it remains durable over time. If you're not in need of a full cover, Empire has just launched a line of RV rooftop covers that keep the roof of your RV clean and protect it from UV rays. RV Miles listeners can receive free shipping plus an extra 15% off their entire order. Visit EmpireCovers.com slash RV Miles or use the promo code RV Miles at checkout. It's time to check the level of our tanks. Abby, what is in your black tank this week? Okay, this is a safe space, right? Uh, so yeah, can, between can, you and me, but this is yeah. also on okay. the, the internet. It's so. a safe space, a safe space. Um, <laughs> the internet is probably the definition of not a safe space, but okay, go safe ahead. Space. Go ahead. I have finally decided that it is time to black tank the, um, this is a family show, so I want to try yeah. to keep a family. Um, the, uh, male parts that we like to hang from the back of our trucks. Oh my god. Like we're still doing that apparently. Like we still have a need to uh, put bulls you know throw the ball like on the back of our truck and have them dangle. Yeah. Like that's a thing that, still in 2021. <laughs> that's something. Okay. Uh, you know like, <laughs> we <laughs> were behind a truck today that had um uh bull bits. <laughs> I wouldn't call them bull bits. They had some bull bits hanging and they were just flapping around i just the, i the, don't the, the, i don't the amount of money these things cost you know the <laughs> trucks cost and to do that to <sighs> yeah that's that's well, that's a bit. also i just you know i i just don't <laughs> understand why that is still a thing and why you need to put something back there what are what are you trying to say that that you're Big and strong, yeah, be, and uh, and fertile, and 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 you just you can dominate everything in your in your pickup truck. In your pickup truck. Uh, so it's look, weird. It's, it's not, always been weird, and I can't believe it still happens in the 2020s. Not my thing. <laughs> it's not my thing. So I, you know, this is a safe space, and I'm here to tell you that bull bits on the back of your truck. Are th- we don't do Bit, that anymore. Bits doesn't seem like the word because they're huge. But no, well, you know what though? You know what they say? Okay, compensating for something. Okay, what's in your fresh tank? <laughs> My fresh tank this week goes to Ranger Gandalf Traley the second, who officially left our family on Monday. We, we have officially sold the trailer. For anyone out there. Uh, wanting to sell your RV, it took us, you know, we put it up on Facebook Marketplace uh, and, and Craigslist, but that I didn't, like, update the Craigslist listing. <laughs> you were like, I'm not even doing RV Trader. I'm starting here. <laughs> well, we were going to just take it to a dealer and be done with it, but we put it up on, on Facebook Marketplace just to see what happened, would happen. And for a week, I got no hits. And yeah. I, for, for a minute, I was thinking, well, maybe this used RV market isn't as hot as, as we thought. And then, but you know what? I think it just takes some people a little bit of time because it was getting shared quite a bit and it was getting saved, uh, saved yeah. quite a bit. And then all of a sudden, one day, uh, I just got message after message from people. And we sold it to the first person that, that messaged us, but that but they kept coming. I didn't have time to market sold. And they kept messaging uh, because a lot of people wanted a bunkhouse trailer yeah and if you head over to our wandering family on instagram you can see the very last picture taken with ranger gandalf trailer the second which is an absolute hot 
mess of a picture, Jason. It's blurry. The trailer is in motion because it was already hooked up to the buyer's well, truck. Like, it, and, you know. I it, mean, so, t- and I even <laughs> said in the caption, this could not be more typical of us if we tried. We had, we had a, at least a week earlier finished moving 95% of the stuff out of it. Or at but, least we thought But that's where we stopped. <laughs> and there was still a decent amount of stuff in it. So we towed, and it was awkward. We had it at my brother's house, and it's a little awkward to get out there um, for somebody, you know, towing an RV for the first time or whatever. So we towed it to our storage unit, got the rest of our stuff out there, and, and made the sale there. And uh, uh, that was a, a really rough half hour of rushing to get everything yes. out before they arrived. We had piles in the U-Haul parking lot of things. <laughs> and I, we just looked. It was so typical. It was so typical. But it has gone off to a new family who is going to love it and enjoy it. And it did feel like a 9,000-pound weight came off of my shoulders as I cried as it was driving away obviously that trailer just there's a there's a lot in there that happened for us and so you know I'm really thankful that we had that trailer but I was also just like bye like, you know time to go I'm gonna yeah. give you a fresh tank and then yeah. I'm moving on yeah yeah was so anyway, Jason, what <laughs> is in your black tank okay. this week? All right, I don't know how you're gonna feel about this, but um, oh, I know because you didn't even write right, it down. Okay, so, so you're keeping it a secret. This is gonna be mildly political. Oh and no! And I hope you're okay no, with that. But no, it's, can we put a big? But like, it's but beep, it's like just, but it's a both sidesism thing here. Can you just okay? play the music where we we just <laughs> block out everything you say? No, from here's now on. the thing. I don't and this like I said this is a both sidesism thing here. Like I and we never get political on the oh, podcast. We'll, or we'll see if like this that. makes the cut. But I don't understand boycotting states because of the way that state voted in an election. And I I'm seeing this a lot from people again like I said on both sides. I'm seeing a lot of people that that don't say they will never step foot in California. They don't want to give those Californians a, a dime because they're <laughs> they're too leftist. They don't want to uh, uh, they don't want to go into the southern states because they're all racist down there, and you know that kind of stuff. And you're forgetting the fact that like in every state, in every municipality, whatever your political beliefs are, there's a good chunk of people that have those political beliefs in every area that you go to, right? And there are business owners you know if you're talking about like the racist south well you're if you're if you're ignoring going to mississippi or alabama or stuff you're you're ignoring a heck of a lot of black owned businesses right i i and you're ignoring the civil rights trail so it 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 makes no sense to me when people want to now if you want to boycott california because you don't want to pay gas prices i get that (laughs) but but for political beliefs i i it's I, I just I, I, the, one of the biggest things that I feel like we've learned, or at least I've learned traveling the country, is that like these these borders, these imaginary borders that we have between states and counties and, and cities, they're they're just absolutely meaningless. And 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 there's there's no reason to to not go somewhere because of because of those things. Now there are lots of other reasons to not go somewhere, and that's fine. And I've, everybody has their own reasons of not going to place and that and and that is totally understandable but like i don't know i just think it's time that we all step back a little bit <laughs> uh, put um, the weapons down <laughs> the verbal weapons down uh enjoy this country and and get out there and have some fun boy we are just really is that okay it. did that go too far i think that was okay no <laughs> <laughs> I think it was fine. What I was going to say was I we are really pulling the curtain back on this episode yeah. of like some of the conversations yeah. that we have yeah. in you know in life when you know at yeah. you know midnight when the kids are in bed and we're sitting there trying to work and there's things on our mind and I um I feel the same way too. I as someone who has traveled all over this country for the most part um we have found some really beautiful and really heartbreaking and really horrific things in every single state 
and I do think that we talk about this a lot in, across all platforms, you have to be really careful when you start to oversaturate something. And then what happens is the real focus of why that thing came to be to begin with becomes lost because we have oversaturated it so much and we have seeped it into everything that people start using it as weapons against each other. And then the real true meaning of that message starts to get lost. Yeah. And so in that respect, I, I absolutely agree with you. And, you know, to, to distill it down even more. It's like when the kids come up to me and they say, so-and-so just hit me. And, you know, then that person goes, well, they hit me after. And then I have to say, well, what happened was... Somebody, they hit me yesterday. Right. <laughs> they hit me they last hit, week. You know, <laughs> or someone, you know, gets hurt and they get so angry at that person and they're yelling at that person that, you know, hurt them. And then I have to say, well, what has happened now is I have to, I, I am now focused on the anger that you are exuding towards that person rather than being able to focus on what was at the root of this problem. Because now I have you screaming over here at somebody and so I, I think that that is, I think, you know, maybe what you're trying to say a little bit, too. And I completely agree with that. Yeah. I mean, you know. They're, Be they're, nice to us in the comments, okay? It's just <laughs> that there are people from all walks of life, wherever you go, and you cannot paint a city, a town, a county, a state, a region with one brush. It is so much more No, but can we also that. acknowledge that some people do genuinely suck? Sure. And I, there are just some people out in this world that I'm like, not today, not tomorrow, yeah. not ever. Yeah. Okay. Those, those, those are decisions that. that make a lot more sense to make. Okay. I'm good with that. <laughs> not, and not, <laughs> you boycott all the businesses you want, all the people that you want, but, but regions, I, I don't get it. All okay. right. What is in your fresh take this week? We we had the pleasure of going to a, a movie in a movie theater for the very first time in a very long time. Probably since Mary Poppins returns. Uh, we saw, which is funny because it had the same yeah. actor in it. We saw, <laughs> we went and saw the Jungle Cruise movie, which was a lot of fun. If if a little too violent, Disney. Wow. Um, wow. Yes. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. But my fresh tank is one of the previews that I saw beforehand, and Abby Abby was almost going to make this her black tank. Yeah, I just I rolled my eyes. It. There is a new Adams Family movie coming out. It is an animated Adams Family movie, and it is an RV road trip across the country. And like the Adams Family RV is awesome, <laughs> and I am so excited for it. They go to the Grand Canyon. They blow things up. It's a complete and total cash grab on where we are all at in this world right now. That movie was probably turned around in two months. They barely took the time to draw Morticia. Like, it's just, you know, it. you are all over you there. You think like, that Morticia's feet didn't move because it was cheaper to animate her that way no, instead of I that she's like they, a floating ghost? She's literally a millimeter wide okay it's, they've drawn her like she doesn't even exist well the less in, the less ink argument doesn't they, work anymore uh, because it's digital yeah they turned this movie around so fast and you are sitting over there just I, like ah! it's just the rv like, is in the zeitgeist it is like mm -hmm. uh, you know and maybe well, it's gonna bring more people to rving and maybe that's not a good thing i don't know but yeah if you needed any more of an indication that rving is now mainstream pop culture you are now getting the adams family part two whatever they're calling it movie number two all about their rv road trip across this great country i think it's gonna be great well you and it's the, probably gonna be terrible it's gonna be Look. awful jason but <laughs> you should go and see it take the boys you guys will have a great time and then you can give me the cliff notes when you get home all right <laughs> Let's wrap this episode up with uh, our tip from the RV Canucks this week about additional storage in your bathroom. Yeah, so this is a really great idea. So we're going to link to it in the show notes because it's a post on Instagram so that you can go over and see the actual picture that goes with it. But we've had RV Canucks on the show before giving a tip. And this one is going and buying just at the dollar store a shower curtain tension rod. Yeah. 
And what you're going to do is you're going to run it along the back of your bathroom wall. So if you can, like through your shower and then continuing along across the wall. If your shower does if that. The, yeah. If your shower does that or another section of your bathroom, perhaps. Then she took hooks and had like a travel case or their shower caddy and she hung them on this tension rod and created all this additional storage that's movable, reusable. She had some hooks. Hers went through the shower and then across through by the vanity. So she was able to really utilize things that she had a um, travel caddy. It, These it are was right against the wall. So right that there's, against the wall. Just, it's just a thing to hang hooks and different things from. It's literally like yeah. having a clothes rack in your closet. You're just transferring that to your bathroom. And, and I, what I loved about it the most, and this is why I want to do it for us, was that she had hooks hanging from the rod that she would put their bathing suits on in the shower to dry. And that is always the biggest thing when we all five, you know, you've got five to 10 pieces when we all come in and they all need to hang up and dry. And sometimes doing that outside is not an option. I loved that. And also just putting a shower caddy in there to give yourself some additional storage because sometimes you get two yeah, you quarter. Are, you get a quarter shelf yeah, back Sometimes <laughs> you only get two. We were really fortunate to have six. But here's the weird thing, okay? You gave me six in Ranger Gandalf, but you sacrificed height. So those bottom ones, most of the time, you could not put a shampoo bottle on there because it wasn't tall enough. Yeah, and hardly, even when it wasn't tall enough, the base wasn't big enough for like the bigger bottles of shampoo. Yeah, because we buy like really yeah. big, like three yeah. in ones for the kids. Yeah. So those would have to go up on top. And, you know, because the eight year old can reach all the way up on the top, yeah, it's, right? That's one of those things. You know, when people complain about RV manufacturers not paying attention to actually using these things, when it's like you have shelves in your shower for shampoo that don't fit. Any normal height shampoo. I wish we could do some kind of virtual reality once someone does a layout of an RV. And then that person who did the layout is then forced through virtual reality. To live in it. To live <laughs> to go in it. And has it all specced out. Yeah. And then they have to take everyday normal things in this virtual world. And they have to try and fit them into what they have designed. And if they can't fit it in there, they need to go back and rethink it. Well, you are always hanging stuff in our shower uh, yes. to dry yes. stuff that you don't want to go through a, in a dryer. Yeah. And this will just provide lots more space to do that as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. But yeah. it's just a really great tip and it's really inexpensive too. And one that if you end up and you don't like it, you just take it right down and you know, you've lost maybe five bucks. So we will link to that. Like we will link to everything that we have talked about today at rvmiles.com slash two zero seven. All right. That's it for this week's episode. That is it. And Hey, as always, if you are enjoying the show and so many of you are, so thank you so much for doing this already. Please head over to Apple podcast and leave us a five-star review. We are only 50 reviews away from hitting one thousand reviews over on apple podcast it is absolutely you could be amazing. the thousand you could you could be one zero 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 and that would be so incredible we will link to apple podcast in the show notes and of course if you are headed over to amazon to do some shopping won't you please take us with you you can go to amazon.com slash shop slash rv miles and then anything you buy in the store amazon not you jeff bezos gives us some money Okay, and we all know Jeff Bezos has a little bit of money to spare. <laughs> okay, if he, the man's like sending himself off into space, maybe he can throw RV Miles a few pennies. If you have any questions for Jason and I, you can find us over at the RV Miles Facebook group or at editor at rvmiles.com. And if you would like to be a part of our RV community tips and tricks, please just tag us on your post. Or send us an email, editor at rvmiles.com. We are looking for IG stories or TikToks or YouTube shorts that are about a minute long that we can paint a picture here on the podcast with. All right. Stay well. Stay safe. Enjoy summer. And keep logging those RV miles. Bye, everybody.